The second stage takes place between 1851 and 1856. Victoria becomes an independent colony on the 1st of July 1851 and it's to be governed by a Lieutenant Governor and a Legislative Council. Now this Legislative Council is not the same Legislative Council as the, that works within the current Parliament of Victoria. It's a quite separate body. On the 1st of July 1851, Victoria had almost no prospects. It was in a recession, it had suffered from very bad bushfires, the wool industry was in decline, it had no prospects. And we all know the story. Seven days later in Clunes, gold is found. A few days or a month later in Buninyong and then Ballarat, a little bit after that in Mount Alexander. And all of a sudden, we have an avalanche of population to Victoria, all that that implies. So you had this poor old legislative council that, where all of the members were complete amateurs and a governor, a lieutenant governor, Lieutenant Governor Charles Latrobe, and they were all totally out of their depth. But nevertheless, this legislative council achieves three vital things. First of all, it writes a constitution for Victoria. That's very important. We have a written constitution. Westminster does not have a written constitution. We do. Secondly, it invents the secret ballot. It's not widely known, but the secret ballot is a product of Victoria and it's spread, as we all now know, right throughout the Western world as the preferred method of controlling voting. And thirdly, the council was wise enough to realise that if they were going to go ahead and develop as a nation, as they thought they were, and particularly as a colony, they needed appropriate accommodation. So they started the process of constructing Parliament House. So they, they made three major contributions to the shape of parliamentary democracy in Victoria. 